The keys to running a successful restaurant. Great food, great ambiance, great staff. But today, people judge your restaurant before they ever walk in the door. They won't give you a chance unless you have amazing online reviews. I'm Andrew Gruel, and I run Slapfish Restaurant with my best friend and chef, Anthony Dispensa. Andrew has a brilliant mind for business. And Anthony can whip any kitchen into shape. With over 20 plus locations in development worldwide, Anthony and I utilize online reviews to create the perfect experience. One bad review can sink your business by up to 20%. Which could mean the difference between staying open and shutting your doors down forever. For restaurant owners across the country, it's really difficult to distinguish between the truth and what's just online trash talk. Tonight, for the first time, the owner of Giuseppe's Italian Restaurant comes face to face with her harshest online critics. The New Yorkie tastes like it was store bought. It sucks. You're not a food critic. Take your hipster asses over the hill. Terry's downright nasty, and even Eric. People like this come in and they That's know. Been here for 20 years. Will you listen Anymore. to me? Let me. Finished. Will Terry be able to hear what customers are saying and become the owner she needs to be? Turkey meatballs? What are you on a diet? Or will she keep taking everything so personally that she drives her business into the ground? I have a breaking point. Let's go get her out. I'm going yeah, get out. She shut it down. West Hills, California is an upscale neighborhood in LA's San Fernando Valley that's surprisingly lacking in high-end restaurants. So an Italian eatery like Giuseppe's that considers itself fine dining should be raking in the dough. Yeah, but based on a compilation of restaurant review sites, Giuseppe's receives an average rating of only one out of five forks. The reviewers say the food is tasteless, stale, and way too expensive for the quality. I'm giving Giuseppe's one fork for being very expensive with very cheap food. So I had the gnocchi risotti for 20 bucks, and it was definitely store-bought. I don't mind paying good money for Italian, as long as the pasta is handmade and the ingredients are fresh. I had their spaghetti meatballs, and it was bland and uninspiring. It's pretty important if you're an Italian eatery to have a good sauce, and this was definitely not good. I was really turned off by this salad bar. I mean, there was some questionable cabbage salads. How long are these things sitting there? I don't know how many people came and sneezed on these things. They say the decor is dull, cheap, and outdated. When we walked into Giuseppe's, it looked kind of 70s, but then they had checkered tablecloths like they were trying to do a bistro. So we were a little confused about what they were trying to do with the decor. And the worst part is, when the online reviewers complain about the service, they say the owner responds harshly. I'm giving Giuseppe's one fork, not because of the restaurant, but Terry's attitude left a bad taste in my mouth. Because of the outpour of negative reviews, the owner, Terry, sent us a plea. Simon's up. Andrew and Anthony, I need your help to save my restaurant. I am now in my ninth year at Giuseppe's, and it's been very difficult to keep my business going. And now I'm facing new difficulties because of the online reviewers. They use the anonymity of the internet to lie. They think they're food critics. They're not food critics. When people go online and read those idiots' reviews, they drive people away. It has a direct negative effect on my business. It really pisses me off. It just feels like a knife in my heart, and I don't deserve it. I seriously think that those online reviewers don't have the balls to confront me. I wish they would. I've spent over $70,000 on that place. I also took out a second mortgage on my house. If this ridiculousness doesn't stop with these online reviews, I don't know what's gonna happen to the restaurant. It's really starting to scare me. If I lose the restaurant, I lose everything. I'll be living out of the back of my truck with my two dogs. And my employees won't have jobs anymore. I wanna be there for them. So I gotta keep this place open. I'm using the last of the money that I took out on my second mortgage to renovate Giuseppe's. This is my last ditch effort to save this place. It's really hard for me to say this, but I do need help. Hey, Giuseppe, how you doing, pal? So Anthony and I are here for the next four days to help Giuseppe's change their online reviews from one fork to five forks. Terry, I'm Andrew. Andrew, nice okay. to meet you. And this is Anthony. I'm Anthony. Anthony. So we saw the plea you uploaded online. Oh, OK. okay. We're going to help you improve your online reviews. Yeah. I'm not a real big fan of those online reviewers. You're not a fan of the online reviewers? No. Let them walk a mile in my shoes, and then they can judge me, you know? So we came in, and I think we looked at everything from the perspective of the ambiance, the food, the service. And I got to say, some of the points that they're making in these reviews are dead on. You see the prices on this menu? Well, they're fine dining prices. I'll pay $25 for a pizza if it's the good. ingredients are good. If it's good, right? This is more like 1980s pizzeria decor. You got fake ivy behind you. Check this out. I got my lattice back here. <laughs> 
I got a torn booth. Are you kidding me? This says fine dining for sure. And then we got, I love the fake flowers over here. Yeah, this is good. I, I like that there's water in there. Gnocchi rosati and salmon alba. Look at these pasta dishes, the same exact colors. Cream, cream, tomato, tomato. You see how that sauce is broken right there? It's oil and tomato. I hate that, man. Like a rock hard. This is important, you ready? Wow, that's a little mealy. Oh my God. You can just tell those are overworked. Honestly, it tastes like dog food. Yeah. And then you got this so-called Giuseppe dish. What the hell they did with this chicken, I have no idea. What is all that beer? I don't know. That's their signature dish. So that's gonna have people coming back? Really? I guess we're gonna make our own salads. I follow you. It's this is a classic salad bar. <laughs> Does this even remind you of Italian? No. Like, come on, really? No. I'm Italian, and when I see people serving bad cafeteria-type Italian, it makes my blood boil. Here we go. Canned mushrooms in there? Hey, you want some uh, canned beets? No, dude. Like, nothing's made. It's all, like, it's all canned. Obviously, one of the most quintessential Italian ingredients. Do you want some Spam? Wow, Andrew, you're just making the best salad ever. That's not olive oil. Really? No, that's oh, actually, no, that's just, oh my God. Oh, that's fryer oil. $25 a plate. It's gotta be fresh. Obviously, dealing with online reviews is a big part of being in the restaurant business, and they can make or break the business. Well, look, are you willing to hear what the online reviewers have to say face to face? Bring it on. All right, so we got some people that we want you to meet. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna close up shop. We're gonna take care of everybody's bill in here. So everybody, your, your dinner's on me. Yay! He's paying for the drinks, I got the food, all right? But the caveat is you gotta get out of here. I'm Jeff, and I spent a lot of time in Italy, and the food over there is amazing. It's full of passion, love, and romance. Here, I don't get that. You can't pull one over on me. I'm Bob, I'm a local successful entrepreneur, and I love supporting local businesses. So if they don't have good service, they're not getting my money. I'm Gigi, I have a food blog, and I am a social media whore. And my food blog gets over 100,000 views a month. My followers listen to me. Oh my god, I've been waiting so long to have the opportunity to confront people about the nasty stuff that they say about me and my restaurant. Those yin yangs ain't gonna know what hit them. All right, thanks for coming back, everybody. So we're here tonight because this is your opportunity to step out from behind that online handle and say it to Terry's face. So. Let's start it off with the ambiance. Why don't you stand up? All right. The decor was um, brown and drab and um, dreary. I didn't really know that brown had a color scheme. What is this right here? What color is that? Red. What, are you colorblind? What? It's not all brown. Listen, you could paint this. You could have this wall right here, red, white, and green. You could put a flag up. You Wouldn't could that be kind of cheesy, though, cheese no, wall? It, it, I mean, anything that has a, a little flair of Italian. So. How about staff knowledge of the product? Did anybody here try and order any wine with their food? Yeah, I you did. You want to stand up? Yeah, uh, I was just a little disappointed because when I ordered, I asked about the wine, what do they recommend with my meal? And they brought me a wine list and just left me to my own devices. You know, when you go out, it's a big deal to go out and spend money. And I guess I would just like for the staff to be a little bit more knowledgeable. Normally in that situation, they're, they're supposed to say, hold on, let me go get Terry, and then I could help you, or Danielle, somebody who does know that. All right, so on to the food. So how many of you actually had the spaghetti and meatballs? I did. Hi, I'm Christy, and I rated it two forks, which is already very generous. For me, Giuseppe's means a lot to me because I grew up here in West Hills. When you ordered the dish, what did you what did you anticipate? I wanted really meaty meatballs. The sauce wasn't as flavorful as I remembered it. The meatball recipe hasn't changed. It just wasn't as good. Even though the recipe might not change, it doesn't matter. They might not be making it the same way. It's the same guy. Are you making I got the it? Same but, are you, guy. but are you making it? We had the meatballs. The meatballs were not good. Yeah, yeah here, I'm right with you guys. I would have sauteed some mushrooms. I would have. That's not how we make it. Take your hipster asses over the hill, okay? I really do think you need to do that. All right, who here had the gnocchi? Cool, would you mind standing up and telling us about it? I had the gnocchi. Tastes like it was pretty much store-bought. 20... The gnocchi or the sauce? All of it. Every time I bit into it and swallowed, it was like basically falling down to my gut. It was heavy. For 20 bucks, I either get something handmade or I go to the store and get 20 boxes of mac and cheese. Do you know how insulting it is to compare something with store-bought mac and cheese? Well, do you know how insulting it is to pay that amount of money? Don't get mad at the reviewer, the customer. The cooking. I get mad at the way you say the it. Cook You're not being constructive. I am being constructive. You're, it dropped down to the it middle of your stomach. I didn't like it. The truth hurts. The truth makes you better. Exactly. Your that hurts. Take it how you want. 
It sucked. I don't like snarky comments. Just say it the way it is. Don't say it dropped down to my stomach. That's how that's he felt. That's insulting. Yeah, felt. but that's how you felt. You have to. Uh, I don't care how you feel. But it, you You're should. not a food critic. Where did you go to culinary that's school? That's the problem. But that doesn't you matter. You don't care about the customer. Listen, listen, listen. Yes, I do. You don't. I, I wouldn't. I, you don't own a restaurant unless you care about people. You don't. Don't tell me if what I know. Did, if you did, if you did, telling you because obviously you don't know how to cook. I'm done with you. So here's the thing, though. He's giving you criticism. And as a restaurant owner, you have to listen to the, what the customer is telling you. If they're telling you something, you have to act on it. Hold okay. On. Yeah. But hold on. There's something wrong there. And if you're not going to fix it, that's your fault. Whatever. OK. So let's talk Let's talk more about food. We haven't heard from you. No, what did you have? have? What's your name? My name is Gigi. And Gigi. I ate that's... salad bar. And wasn't wasn't the most appetizing. I ate some cucumbers and a couple tomatoes that tasted really, really watery. How many forks did you get? I gave it one. However, I have to say, Terry was very nice to me. I wrote in my review that you were a very nice woman. However, after hearing your responses to everyone else, I kind of want to go back and change my review. This gentleman right here got a brutal beating. He deserved it. We come in here If to you like... go on the internet and you write that BS where I can't really respond, because if I go on those online Actually, websites, Actually, you I'm can. I'm still talking. You have to be, be very, tread very lightly. You don't want to say the wrong thing. Exactly. But you're if allowed you're... to say whatever you want and however you want to say it? That's if not you... fair. I'm saying you're the I face. I stand for every single restaurant owner in this country that would, has been through all this It's been juggling the same your thing. emotions as the face of the company. This is eight on one. And no, I'll but we're here to help. Nine out of 10 times when people write online reviews, they're writing it for you because they wanted you to hear the message. They like listening hey, you know to what, themselves. You know what you're missing too is like what she I said. I need to interject you guys. Okay, go for I'm it. Bob. I'm not a professional food critic, but I have been coming here for well over 20 years, and I happen to be a successful entrepreneur. And I can tell you this, Giuseppe, the prior owner, the founder of this place, sweetheart of a guy. This is why I wrote the one of the few reviews I've ever written online that Terry has got an attitude. At best, she's cold. I've had more than one occasion that she was downright nasty and even arrogant. I know lots of people that have been coming here for decades, and many of them don't anymore as we don't. Good for you. Don't come back. Really? That's my point. Really? You, you got a, you've got an opportunity you, you to fix why? a problem because when you're ready to show up. I do want to know why. Guys like this, people like this come in, and they That's know. has been here for 20 years. Will you listen to me? Let me finish. You're seeing the real her, folks. People like this come in, and they That's know. it has been here for 20 years. Will you listen to me? Over. Let me finish. <laughs> They know Giuseppe, and Giuseppe walks around. I'm not Giuseppe. No, I'm I just not said Giuseppe. he's big I'm shoes I'm not done to talking. Go. OK. You got to say your little spiel, your entrepreneur. How do you think I got to stay in business for eight years? Because I work hard. Good. I work hard, too. I don't know what I did that was so rude to you. Maybe I was having a bad day. And now you go and tell everybody. You go on the, on the internet. You right? have a terrible attitude for a business person. And, and if you can't handle being out here, stay in back and let your management people deal with it for you. Don't tell me how to run my business. It really pains me as a restaurant owner to hear you say, don't come back. Like, I've never, ever been able to say that to a guest. And really? I have people who spit in my face. Really? And still will serve them, because that's the philosophy that we have. The customer is always right. Because once you tell him not to go back, he's going to tell 100 more people, and then those 100 other people are going to tell 100 more people, and they're going to be like, well, I'm never going to come back to that restaurant. Right? And now what happens? You've lost everyone. You weren't there. Doesn't matter. I mean, this is a, this is this is a customer right here that you want to make a loyal guest. All these customers. All right, Tara. Obviously, these guys have said some good stuff to you. If we take into consideration a lot of your constructive criticism, would you be willing to come back and give us another shot? Show of hands. I think we got a lot of work to do. Thank you all for coming in tonight, and we'll see you in a couple days. I don't think there's any hope for this restaurant because, yeah, you can change the food, you can change the restaurant, but you can't change Terry. I think my review rang truer than ever. Everyone got to see Terry for who she really is. I think her attitude is going to continue to make her drive her business right into the ground. I, I'm not on board with this yet. OK. OK, come, come on. on. Ladies first. Grazie bello. Last night was shocking. I can't believe Terry told customers right to their faces not to come back. Here's the thing. You could tell that Terry's scrappy, and she did whatever it took to launch this business. But now she's at a place where if she doesn't listen to some of her criticism, she's going to lose it all. I think we got a lot to go over. 
Okay. First, we have to persuade Terry to really lean into this fine dining concept. If you're gonna charge $20 for a plate of pasta, it better be fresh and authentic Italian. Second, we've got some suggestions to elevate the pizza parlor feeling in the dining room. And third, we're recommending some staff training to deliver the kind of service that's expected in fine dining. I always tell everybody, right, you could have the best food in the world. If you have bad customer service, your restaurant's gonna fail. Being a proud Italian, when I taste boring, Americanized Italian, I take it personally. I'm like, get caldo, Good Italian is so simple. It's a crime to do it like this. So obviously, we've heard a lot of complaints on meatballs, right? Yeah, I wanted really meaty meatballs. We had the meatballs, and the meatballs were not good. Here, yeah, here, I'm right know. with you guys. Take your hipster asses over the hill, okay? The meatballs were not good, the sauce was not good, and I could just tell that there was no love going into it. You, you don't like my meatballs. He's a pompous He's not like Wolfgang Puck. This is one of my favorite things in the world is meatballs. And meatballs are something I did every Sunday with my mom. In Italy, they don't do it with spaghetti. It's just meatballs, that's it. So what I have here is a little bit of ground up turkey. Are you serious? Turkey meatballs, what are you on a diet? You think turkey meatballs are fine dining? You use ground beef. Everybody uses ground beef in their meatballs. I think this meatball is gonna taste like a sponge. The meatball that I had here was very dense. It had a bite to it that you don't really want. The sauce wasn't as flavorful as I remembered it. The meatball recipe hasn't changed. It doesn't matter. They might not be making it the same way. It's the same guy. Are you making I got it? the but same you, guy. But are you making it? So why do you use turkey? I like it because it's a light meat rather mm -hmm. than something strong like beef. Okay. In the food processor here, we have the turkey. And what we're going to do is we're going to stick one egg in there. And then I'm going to pulse this. Pulse it. And what this is doing is it's breaking down the tissues in the meatballs. So like, when you're mixing it, normally, you're actually making it gummy. So what I'm doing is I'm breaking down that meat tissue and those meat particles so it actually gives a nice light texture to it. Put that in here like this, and then we're gonna add another egg and some ricotta, just a few ingredients, right? And then we're gonna take this bread that's been soaking in milk. Yeah, we use dry bread crumbs and Parmesan cheese. And see, cheese. and dry bread crumbs is gonna make it dense. So by soaking this bread in milk, I've taken that density out. Fold in and push down. We don't want to over mix these meatballs. So you go in, not so fast, Okay. gentle. Love, you got to put some love in here, yeah? Okay. You're good, you're done. Good. So when you actually make meatballs, I always put my hands in the water so your hands don't stick. Yeah, I know that. You go like this, right? And boom, you got your meatball. And you see how light they are? Yeah. Nice and I light. I just don't know how I feel about changing our meatball recipe. Here's that scrappy Terry again. I'm an Italian chef teaching her how to make I Italian know, food, and she still won't good. listen. The meatballs are not good. Do you want to lose customers, or do you want to gain customers? I'm afraid to update some of my dishes. I really am, because the clientele that I have is so used to the old school Giuseppe way. I got to keep them because I need the customers. Do you want money in your pocket, or do you not want money in your pocket? Because if you're not willing to change, you might as well just shut the doors down now. You see how light they are? Yeah. Nice and I light. just don't know how I feel about changing our meatball recipe. The meatballs are not good. Do you want to lose customers or do you want to gain customers? Because if you're not willing to change, you might as well just shut the doors down now. I am willing to see whatever Anthony and his fancy pants cooking school that he came from has to offer. But I'm not going to say I'll do it. OK, so now we're going to pull these out that have been cooking in here. How long did you bake them for? We bake them for about, I'm gonna say 10, 15 minutes. We cook the meatballs medium, then we sear them quickly in a little olive oil to give them texture and color. What do you think so far? You see anything different? Yeah, it's different way. Yeah, it's interesting. It's just exciting things to do something different. Excited to do something different. Yeah. That's awesome. For the sauce, we'll start by cooking fresh garlic and pepperoncino chili flakes in a little olive oil. You add tomatoes, basil, and then cook it down for a few minutes. Simple, easy, fresh, and delicious. You can smell that, right? Put a little of that in there. And since plating is so important to how our food looks online, we're going to serve these meatballs in their own little dish. That's a lot of balls in there. That's what she said. <laughs> we're going to put a little of this sauce on top. Garnish right. with a little basil chiffonade and grated Parmesan. Look at that. That's awesome. And you got one buzzworthy dish. Why don't you taste it and see if you're willing to change it from your old meatabola? What's your thoughts? 
I don't believe the turkey meatballs are gonna be a hit. Just no, they're awful. I think they taste like sponges. While Anthony's in the back with Terry, I've got to talk to the staff about the front of the house and elevating the customer service to true fine dining. So I was expecting like a chunk of cheese to be kind of grated table side, but I got the grated Parmesan cheese. Now this to me says pizza parlor. We've got like some fresh Parmesan here or this, which would you rather have? So do you smell that fresh Parmesan cheese? What this does, it adds a relationship between you and the guests. Very, very, very simple, good fresh cheese. And that's such an easy step. I've worked in some of the finest restaurants in the country, and what really defines fine dining is the freshest ingredients. Nothing pre-made, it's a tasteful environment, an impeccable service. And I bet none of them had a salad bar. No. So we've got to get Terry to budge on this one. This has got to go, don't you think? No. Why? People like it. I got to keep it. When you think salad bar, what do you think? Like, I think hospital. Yeah, uh, no, oh. I don't think hospital. I think more like um, the cheap. But do you want to be in that realm? No, of, but I don't. But that's what this does. That's what this does to customers, man. Like, they see that. And that turns people away. The question is, do you want new customers coming in here, a younger crowd, so that you have a longer style of business? Or do you want a few followers coming in to get the salads? Not a few, and I want both. And I have attracted new people, as well as retained the, the, old, the old school people who love that salad bar. I don't want to live and die by the salad bar, but I, what I did want to do was use this as a starting point to think about the whole restaurant. We've really got to change the staff's attitude to kickstart this fine dining concept. So we're gonna arm Giuseppe's staff with knowledge. This is it, huh? Rosenthal Winery. Tasting some wines from their suppliers will give these servers the confidence they need to make suggestions to diners, which is something online reviewers complain about. I was just a little disappointed because when I ordered, I asked about the wine, what did they recommend with my meal? And they brought me a wine list and just left me to my own devices. Philip is a wine expert. He's going to take us on a little tasting journey, if you will. Lot to learn. Should we start off with the Sauvignon Blanc? Let's do it. Let's do it. Right. So the Sauvignon Blanc today, it's from Santa Barbara County. We make this in a New Zealand style, so it's very light, crisp. So you're going to get lots of citrus notes. So if you're selling this table side, instead of just saying it's good, it's nice, and kind of these bland words to describe the wine, you pick a particular flavor, and you almost implant that in the customer's head so that they start to taste that as you say it. Keep it kind of simple, table side, full of knowledge, confident. People want to come in, they're going to spend $25 on a plate of pasta, and they want to know that they're getting not just good food, but they're getting knowledgeable service. Investing in your staff with knowledge about wine will not only make customers happier, but pay off in serious profits. So we're going to start off by just giving it a little swirl. That's opening it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it gives it a little air, enables it to breathe. You guys, what do you guys smell? I can't tell, but I like the smell. <laughs> That's a good stuff. That was a great answer. <laughs> it's good. It's light, it's crisp. What do you think this would go with on your menu? Maybe fish, cheese. It goes well with a lot of things with some salt, so it just sort of balances out the salt notes. What's nice and salty, right? Parmesan. You dig into some cheese while you, and then drink some wine just to see how your palate reacts. That's good cheese. So what's our next wine we're going to be tasting here? This is primarily Merlot. So this is a great pizza wine. Yeah, we make a lot of really good specialty pizzas, too. So let's start with Chardonnay. Chardonnay. Chardonnay, what would that go well with on your menu? Creamy pasta. This man did his homework. So you got a little bread. You got I a got a little buzz. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear that, Andrew? Terry's got a buzz. All right, so this is the right time. The staff has already learned a lot about wines and what pairs well with them. So they're well on their way to fine dining. Now we've just got to get that one last piece of the puzzle. Let's do this. Phil, when's the last time you ate at a salad bar at a, at a full service restaurant? Um, yeah, it's a long time ago. I've been spinning all all of last night about the salad bar and like trying to take it away and oh yeah yeah does that mean that the physical monstrosity salad bar is yeah. out if i get rid of that salad bar i mean i really do think i'm going to lose customers and i know it's it's a fear driven decision but i don't know if i'm ready for all these changes i, it, I don't know I've been spinning all of last night about the salad bar. And, I, and, and she I, did. She texted me at 10.30. She's like, so are you cool with taking away the salad bar? I was like, hell yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Does that mean that the physical monstrosity, the 1968 Mustang salad bar, is yeah. out? It can. I, I got to make a phone call. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm nervous, 
but I'm gonna roll the dice. I'm really hoping that wasn't just the wine talking. I think that part of the reason that Terry wanted to keep that salad bar was that it helped justify her $20 pasta prices, which included a trip to the salad bar. But now that we've amped up her menu with more authentic Italian dishes, she can charge $20 just for an entree and then charge even more for a salad. You know what? I got the perfect one. I gotta say, I'm proud of you. Uh, yeah, I think that was a tough thing for you to do to get rid of that salad, and I think this is I think this is a good step for you. Online reviewers blasted Terry's salad bar. I went straight for the salad bar and wasn't the most appetizing. If you just decide to go to the salad bar without ordering anything else, you're kind of SOL. That a lot. So today I'm going to show Terry a take on a classic Caprese salad, the wild arugula salad. The star of the salad is the fresh mozzarella, which is really simple to make. I start by mixing the cheese curds in 100 degree water to warm them up. Once they're warm, I add 160 degree water to break them down. See how it's already starting to really break down there? Stretching the mozzarella changes the curds into the right. delicate mozzarella texture. See how it's starting to really start to get silky? That's what you want. The final step is to shape the cheese into a ball then soak it in a brine solution, which will bring out the natural flavor of the curds. You can let that sit in there for about five, 10 minutes. And that's it? Yeah, it's ready to use right away. Okay. Once we have our fresh mozzarella, we get started on the salad, which has three different tomatoes, heirloom, grape, and cherry. We have some onions, some calamata olives, mm -hmm. and then some fresh basil, and then some arugula. People love tweeting and Instagramming salads. They usually arrive first, they're colorful, and people love posting how they're eating healthy instead of that big pasta dish. A little bit of olive oil, and then a little bit of balsamic on there. By having a showcase salad like this one, it's sitting out an automatic ad for your restaurant. Voila, there's your salad. Looks great. Does it say something that you'd want on your menu? Yeah, it says fine dining. Terry's been very quiet. It's almost a bit unnerving, like being in the eye of a storm. She's been operating the same way for nine years, and big changes can be hard. Or she's secretly planning my demise. <laughs> yeah, that could be it, too. There are a lot of elements in the decor that need an upgrade if this place is going to become fine dining. The decor was um, brown and drab and um, dreary. There were fake flowers, old school lattice walls, and rundown booths, which had tears in them. So you're not married to these tablecloths? Oh, no. What about these flowers here? It's just me being cheap, and I, you know, because when it's slow, I don't spend okay, 20 so bucks a week on flowers. Let's, I really should let's have do that. Ta flowers. Let's somebody jump on pulling these flowers off, somebody jump on pulling all the tablecloths off. Hey, Andrew, what do you think if, if uh, we changed up a little bit of the seating plan here? Have you ever thought about like big rounds or something that's kind of Italian style, like family style? We do. This people one, like yeah, the we, we table. open up this. This they one like, opens up people like that. Yes. They what do they like? Other. They fight over the round table. So round tops are awesome. Then. Yeah. One thing that did catch my eye right off the bat that did say 1980s is that lattice wall. I want to see that wall come down. Oh, oh, this thing's heavier God. than I thought. Hey, pretend like it's Bob. Oh, Bob! What an ex-husband, Bob. Two and a half ex-husbands. As I'm swinging this sledgehammer, all I can think of is there's no turning back now. I'm using the last of the money that I took out on my second mortgage to renovate Giuseppe's, and I'm taking a gamble. Yeah. If these renovations don't give Giuseppe's that mm, that it needs, I'll be in the back of my car. There we go. Oh. With only 24 hours left until the grand reopening, it's time for our crew to fully transform Giuseppe's into a fine dining establishment. First, we're refurbishing the outdated booths by reupholstering the torn seats to give the space a more upscale look. We're stripping away the chintzy lattice on the partitions and painting it over with a chestnut brown color to help add warmth and richness to the room. To make the restaurant feel more elegant, we're adding sheer curtains to soften the room. The square tables took up a lot of space and made the area feel cramped. So we're gonna get rid of them and get round tables. Not only will that open up the space and be more traditionally Italian, Terry said her customers love round tables. Oh, we good, we good? Yeah, we're good. We good, look out, look out, look out. Oh, thank God, this thing's out of here. Hopefully, Terry will like the new changes. Maybe we should have a glass of wine ready, just in case. Let's make it a whole case of wine. <laughs>
I'm so nervous about this. This is it. I just spent my last dime on this place. And if these renovations don't meet my expectations, I'm out of luck. So are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Oh, wow. Oh. Before you had the booths where they were ripped, they were separated by some kind of faux wood and ivy, and now they look really, really clean and elegant. They feel clean and elegant, and then we've removed some of the clutter from the tops so that you open up this kind of communal feel of the room. Took the fake flowers out with the real flowers, just some simple touches. Now the salad bar is gone, it's real. The diners aren't gonna have to get up from their tables. And where you guys are standing, there was a wall. Now it's more, even more open. What do you think the diners are gonna think about the absence of the salad bar? I know you were concerned about some of your regulars. It's gonna be difficult. I mean, we're gonna have to win them over. This is gonna mean that you're gonna have to sell them on this. Right. Which means you're gonna have to be really nice to them. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't this feel warm in here when you come in and this is what you're greeted with? Very, very, very clean and elegant. It's radio silence from Terry. Totally. And I understand that it's easy to take this stuff personally. She worked hard to get this place to where it is. But here's where we start to see if she can see the big picture and hear what customers are telling her. I find it really hard to accept all these changes. It's a lot to take all at once. The wine rack up top over here. We got rid of some of the other kind of mismatched art pieces. Now, the wine bottles are the focal point, which fits with the fine dining concept. Before, some of the tables in here were a little bit older, and they were cluttered through the room, and it just felt a little disjointed. And now we've put these round tables in, which is classic Italian dining. People are going to you know, go crazy to sit at these tables. It adds some space to the room, opens things up. Are you OK with this? I'm livid. What's wrong? You're about to kill someone. I, I need square tables, because you, you took out a lot of the tables. I don't know if I want to buy into all this. I don't know if I want to make those changes. Now I'm riled up, and now I'm pissed. Let's go get her out. Let's go in there. Yeah. Get out. She shut it down. Get out. She shut it down. I'm not on board with this yet. We have eight people. We'll just walk into this restaurant. Unannounced, I needed some square tables. How the f am I going to put tables together? Terry has shut down the chute. She's upset about us swapping out her square tables for round tables, even though it sounded like she was on board for the round tables earlier. Have you ever thought about like big rounds or something? We do. This people one, like yeah, the we, we tables. open up this. This they one like, opens up people like that. Yes, because they can all see like? each other. They fight over the round tables. Yeah. So round tops are awesome then. Yeah. Okay. So we talked to Terry and explained that we can exchange some of the round tops for square tables without costing her any more money. But this is clearly about more than the shape of the tables. This is an owner who can't see beyond herself and take input from anyone. She has to face her harshest critics in just a few hours. We're about to taste the menu. It's time to dig deep and lead this team. I'm so emotional and heated, but I'm going to have to get past this. I don't want to let anyone down. I want to let my staff down or my customers down. There's a lot riding on this tonight, but I have faith. We're going to make it through this. All right, guys. You ready to try out the new menu? We've got this incredibly eye-catching bruschetta with slow-roasted tomatoes. Wow, that's good. good. This right here, our fusilli pasta with pulled chicken, is our response to a chicken Giuseppe. What the hell they did with this chicken, I have no idea. That's their signature dish. So that's going to have people coming back? The chicken was very, very much in the pizza parlor style. And we've now taken that and we've introduced it into a pasta dish with pulled chicken, Parmesan cheese, fried capers for that nice saltiness and a little bit of texture. We've got the creste de oro pesto. All right, so these are just the classic style pesto, which is basil that's been blanched off with some pine nuts, a little bit of garlic, and parm. These are simple yet truly authentic Italian dishes. My mother would be proud. A lot of the pastas before when we came in here was just the pasta and then topped with one of two sauces. This one integrates an original pesto recipe and a unique style of pasta that you're not going to get at most restaurants. The gnocchi dish, just some simple potato gnocchis with butternut squash puree, diced butternut, and a little drizzle of brown butter. The gnocchi is so good. We have turkey ricotta meatballs. Some of the reviewers 
felt that the meatballs didn't hit the mark. So what we've done is we've jazzed this up and made it buzzworthy. Meatballs. Meatball. Whether Terry can see it or not, these meatballs are much more authentic and are going to be a big hit in the restaurant and online. Before, we had the salad bar. And now we have our fresh-made house mozzarella and tomato salad. That's an incredibly colorful, vibrant salad that should really become the institutional salad here at Giuseppe's. What do you think, Terry? Oh, I think it's great. The new menu items, they're really fresh and they're exciting. I realize if I want to be successful at this, I'm going to have to embrace change. Do you have faith in putting on that happy hat and really taking criticism? Because I'll be honest, right? I've been working on what I'm going to say to Bob all day. See, this is the old Terry. This is what no, no, I was waiting for. No, no, no. To... This is not old Terry. <laughs> So old it's not Terry, old, Terry. old Terry went to therapy this week. We're good. <laughs> All right, well, listen, we're excited about tonight, but it's going to be go time in a few seconds. So we'll see you guys in a little bit as people start to come into the room, OK? Yeah. All right, Terry. Thanks. Thank Thanks you. for being there. You Thanks. got it. Appreciate everything yeah. you taught me. OK, guys. We can do this, right? Yes. I, got, I really do have faith in all you guys. Oh. Thanks for being there for me. Of course. Anytime. You're welcome. I'm going to take this in the back because I don't cry. <laughs> I absolutely love my staff, and I'm so glad that they're here with me. They're my family. I care about each and every one of them. You OK? It was a moment of weakness. I'm good. Do you have any concerns? What are, if any? Honestly, my concerns is that I'm, I'm going to have to deal with these, these people who were I've let go of them being nasty to me. I don't think Giuseppe's has any hope. All that cray cray she has is going right into that food, and it's going to stay there. Coming face to face with them again, it's starting to scare me. You're welcome. Terry is minutes away from facing her harshest online critics again. The last time they met, sparks flew. If I go on those online Actually, websites, you I'm can. still talking. How do you think I got to stay in business for eight years? Because I work hard. Good. I work hard, I'm too. I'm not done talking. After taking a hard look at what her critics had to say in the last few days, Terry has made some serious strides. But will she be able to keep her cool when she's face to face with the people who called her out? I'm loving this salad here. They took away that salad bar. Thank goodness. Just like more room. They fixed the booze, which had some tears in it and stuff, so that's all new. Can I try the gnocchi? Do you guys want to have any wine with that? We have a Sauvignon Blanc. It's very airy, crisp. Before, at Giuseppe's, the only thing high-end was your bill. Now we have a staff that knows how to execute the fine dining experience. And we have the atmosphere and food to match. All right, let's put that sweet potato gnocchi in there. Make sure they have their drinks and everything, and then we'll go ahead and send the entrees. OK, guys, first order's in. Table 24, bruschetta and a wild arugula salad. So I'm a little worried because we haven't had that much time to learn this new menu. But I got to make sure that these dishes go out right, because this is our last chance. OK, 27's appetizers are up. Which one to the gnocchi you make it? This one, this one? No, so that's, it's, it's another one. I'm waiting for meatballs for six. What about two? Did two get any appetizer? Can't wait to try the food. Tables are waiting, and this is when, as an owner, you have to get out front and communicate with your guest. All my dishes, all my things that I need are not there. The question is, will Terry be able to keep her cool out there or explode like before? We got to quit hiding in the kitchen. We got to get you out in the front. OK. All right. We need another pesto. I got to go out there. How you guys doing? They're um they're way behind back there. I'm so I'm so sorry. That's okay. Okay. It's okay. We're happy. Good. Thanks. Your wine glasses are full. That's what's important. Looks cool. yeah. yeah. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Hi guys. Hi. Hey. How are you? What do you think? It looks great. We're all really enjoying it. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm sorry for the delay, but you know this is all new to us, so it's taking okay. a little bit. Don't of time. worry. We're enjoying yeah. drinking wine. Enjoying okay. It. Good. We're in great good. shape. You can honestly feel the energy change from when she's in the kitchen to when she comes out on the floor. I guess the real thing is when she hit, touches the table. Like Bob, oh, has she talked about yet? Terry has got an attitude. I know lots of people that have been coming here for decades, and many of them don't anymore, as we don't. Good for you. Don't come back. Really? That's my point. Really? I'm taking these. I don't know what to expect approaching Bob. 
Hopefully, it won't be a rematch. Hey, how you doing? Good, I got um, a salad, the arugula salad and the bruschetta. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. You. How is everything so far? I apologize about the entrees, but it's all brand new to us back there, so Look at they're this. coming. Not a typical day. Okay. Well, thanks. Thank and thanks Thank for coming you. back. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I was a little worried that Bob was going to criticize me again, but um, he, and, he and I kissed and made up. Let's get some entrees out before we get to these people, OK? Here you go, ladies. Two pesto. Oh, wow. Thank you. I've never seen a pasta like that before. I like With a it. little ruffle. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty photo. This is way better than the salad bar, dude. That's a beautiful photo. Right? Hi. Hi. How are Hi. you? Good to Hi. see you. Yes. See you, too. So what do you think? Perfect. Good. It is perfect. Aren't they? I'm glad you came back. I appreciate yes. it. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. It means a lot yes. to me. Mmm. I'm super excited. Oh, these are delicious. The biggest improvement with Giuseppe's was the food. It was $17. But boy, was it worth every penny. I would give them every fork I could, five forks all around. Yeah. You got the gnocchi? Yes. Oh, yeah. What do you think? I love it. It's definitely light. It's tell us how How does your stomach feel? Oh, <laughs> it's good. And the taste is amazing. If you put in the effort, I will, I'll give them five. Well, thanks so much for coming back. Appreciate it, OK? Yeah, man, no problem. Based on Terry alone, not anything else, how many forks are you going to give? I will give her three plus. OK. Yeah. OK. Like 3.5? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't give it an exact four because, you know, it's a unique night. I've got it, that little bit of reticence because, well, I, I really hope she can yeah. maintain that positivity. And I agree with you a 1,000%. Yeah. Hey, Terry. What do you think? I think it's great. You, you talk to almost all the reviewers. It's easier to check on them one at a time instead of the firing squad that I had. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. Are you going to be able to stay out on the floor and keep that smile and not get angry when people yeah. tell you things you don't like to hear? Yeah. Yeah, you, <laughs> you thought about that one. Life is good, yeah. It is. Life is good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Of course. Oh, wait. Ready? There you yeah. go. Yeah, there we go. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. See ya. Night. Hey, Andrew and Anthony. I got to tell you something. I had to bring the salad bar back. But I upped my game, and it does fit in with the fine dining concept. So there's been a lot of good things that have happened since you left. The business is up 25%. People really love the new menu. There's a little bit more labor involved in these dishes, but it's well worth it. Customers love the turkey meatballs. It brings in new people. And it also brings in a different crowd. We went from two forks to four forks, and I'm really grateful for that. I really still hate online reviews, but I have learned to take the constructive criticism. I know I was resistant at first, but thank you, Andrew and Anthony, for all your help.